Don't God. be mad. Nobody gets mad. Mm-hmm. Right, I'm going to reiterate a little bit of what we went over last week for a few of y'all that uh, Accurately this time. <laughs> weren't here. Um, I started off telling you why I became a geologist or how I became a geologist and uh, uh, had a little bit of discussion about Dr. John Clayton, who was my mentor more or less. He was a staunch atheist who was a geologist and a physics professor and um, became a member of the church uh, through his wife that he was dating in college. And his whole goal was to uh, try to prove the Bible wrong scientifically. And he ended up proving it completely right and changed his whole way of thinking and became a Christian because of it. Um, Something else that we discussed that I want to reiterate today and probably will at every class is that uh, Brian was talking about don't get mad about anything we discuss because it's not a salvation question. Things that we're talking about doesn't matter uh, whether you're going to go to heaven or hell. It's just for your knowledge purposes and gives you a little bit of uh, a better stronghold on your faith and your belief system and why things may be well the way they are. It kind of fit a few uh, the missing pieces in, in the puzzle. And I've struggled with this for my entire adulthood. So, you know, we're all in the, we're all in the same boat together. Um, don't want to bore you, but things like this really um, interest me. So I've spent a lot of time studying and reading and uh, going over this. I want you to remember that uh, when we go through Genesis here in just a minute, we have to remember who who wrote it, who it was written to, and what their level of education was, and also their cultural background, because it makes all the difference com- the way it was written to them versus what we know today in our level of education and knowledge compared to what they did, and, and uh, it sheds a whole lot of light on that. So we look at, uh, you know, we look at how long God created it took to prepare the earth. It really shows his divine love for us and how much he cared for us because he wanted everything to be just just perfect and just what we needed. Uh, something that I struggled with in the past is, uh, is it okay to try to understand how God did things? Uh, when I was growing up, um, I was under the impression that If you tried to figure out how God did something or if it was, uh, if you didn't take it literally like the the Bible may say, that you were blasphemous. And I don't feel that way at all. I think God has given us a a beautiful brain and uh, the ability to try to search things out and uh, be smart and understand with our today's technology to figure out the things that he just didn't have room for to put in the Bible, nor did would the people have understood it at the time it was written. Um, and that's something else that you have to understand is that to the people that it was written to, they didn't have the capacity to understand immense timelines, and they also didn't have uh, an understanding or mental capacity to know how to deal with dinosaurs. There was no way they had no reference point in any way to understand that. So. Um, one last thing I want to say is that you have to remember that the present is a key to the past, and that's one of the things that we uh, focus on as geologists is that if you see, uh, uh, let's say, a point bar on the Brazos River, I think I used as an example last week. Well, how long does it take to make that point bar, and how was it done? It's the same thing in the past. Uh, if you find it 5,000 feet deep in, in the ground and you find <coughs> that same point bar, it was created the exact same way it is that you see today on the surface. And so that gives us a lot of uh, indication of how things were done in the past and how long they may have taken. So I want to read something real quick um, that John put together about Genesis 1 and 2 and uh, some things that we might learn as we, as we go into this. Uh, number one, we have to realize that Genesis is a very, very ancient document. It was written in 1445 B.C. by Moses. And so you have to understand that, uh, again, like I said, that uh, it was written for people, the Hebrew people back then. Uh, Genesis was originally written to the Hebrew people, and it gave them a theological foundation for their faith and a basis for their religion. Uh, it set a 
apart God from the pagan gods that so many of them had at the time and explain the relationship between God and human beings and the place that humans have in the world and that God created them, unlike the other pagan gods that they worshipped and stuff. He gave them a, a basis um, for believing that. Genesis was written in simple, straightforward language that could be understood by people of many different backgrounds living over thousands and thousands of years. And that uh, goes back to what I was saying a while ago. You've got to realize the words that were written down were written to the people at that time in their level of knowledge and education. God knowing that we would eventually develop the knowledge and the technology to understand what truly went on at the time. Genesis is not intended to be an exhaustive account, but it's an outline or a sketch of actual events. Genesis uh, doesn't give us all the detail, but it's enough information uh, to base our faith on and to give uh, to base our faith on in God as the creator of, of everything that has been made. Um, one thing about science. As we, what we're trying to do is show a symbiotic relationship between science and the Bible because so many people in the world believe that science and the Bible don't agree with each other and they couldn't be more wrong. There's a beautiful symbiotic relationship between the science and, and the Bible and we're going to do our best to try to show a lot of that and that, of course, is what uh, uh, convinced John Clayton as an um, atheist uh, to become a Christian. And not just any Christian, but he is the one that put together the God Exists campaign and has spent most of his life trying to prove that the science and Bible mix together. One thing is that science can't explain is the existence of matter. And, um, but all scientists agree that there was a beginning. There was a very moment of, of when it all came to be, so to, so to speak. They all agree on that, for sure. You know, uh, something you just said that is just blowing my mind right now. Um, we always just, I guess, take for granted Genesis 1 and 2, the creation story, uh -huh. is just the first part of the Bible. But I never even thought about that, that God needed that to be a part of that text because it set him apart from pagan gods who were just I am the sun or I am the thunder or I am whatever and I just that's just like you know yes the foundation that they needed yes to. God needed to show I'm not like that God I am the God the God yeah that did it all that's exactly. super cool um one thing that we're going to learn is that human beings bear the image and likeness of God, which we know. Unlike other creatures that God formed, humans alone were made in the image of God. It's in this God-likeness that sets humans apart from the biological world and gives us humans distinction and status in the creation. The image of God that we possess, possess gives us spiritual dimension and gives, makes each human being a, similar in a way in which God is a person. Humans are personal creatures and have personality because God is a personal being and has a personality. Human beings were also created by God with the capacity and responsibility to act morally. This is part of the image and likeness of God which each human possesses. Humans are free moral agents and must make decisions and act accordingly to moral principles. And finally, Genesis account tells us that God when he had finished with all he was doing, with all of his creation and everything, God saw that it was good, which tells us something about God's creative acts. The original creation, which was in a state of well-being, and there were natural laws in place that maintained and sustained the universe that God made. So that's kind of what we are <coughs> for a basis of what we're going to be talking about. Y'all don't mind, let's start with a prayer now that we've got kind of some groundwork laid here. Brandon, would you start us with a quick prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for everything you blessed us with and thankful for today that we can gather here and uh, think through the process of what might have happened and uh, look at your uh, amazing design. 
God, you're so much bigger than us, and uh, we find that encouraging, um, and we're so thankful for how you take care of us. I pray that you be with us as we think through this process, and uh, that we might come closer to you and have a better understanding of you. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Brandon. <clears throat> Like I've said before, and I'll probably repeat myself several times, but we're not going to get super technical um, into all this, but we're going to get into it enough that it's going to give you a good foundation and a basis to make a decision uh, where you're confident in your beliefs and in your faith and what God has done for us. Um, and like I said, I don't want to step on any toes, but uh, uh, we've all just kind of been... Um, brought up that way uh, like I was in the church and, and I want us to help us maybe uh, understand that just just a little bit better which I think we can we're going to start this morning we're going to start reading through Genesis uh, we're going to begin in chapter 1 and we're going to read through uh, Genesis 1 through 10 then we're going to go back and discuss each I encourage y'all if you would please ask questions uh, I, when we get through this I don't want you to leave with a bunch of unanswered questions I want you to Think of and dream up whatever questions that you may have concerning all this. And let's discuss them and get them out in the open and uh, try to figure out uh, if we can figure out some answers to those. And, uh, you know, and make a, and, and we can all learn from that. So I encourage you to interrupt me anytime uh, and ask all the questions that you want. Uh, so we're going to start here in uh, Genesis 1 1. <laughs> In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and was void. The darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning of the first, and that was the evening and the morning of the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament, and in the midst of be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters <clears throat> from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters from under the firmament from the heavens in which they were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning of the second day were, <coughs> were completed. <coughs> Verse 9, And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and gathering together the waters, he called sea, and God saw that it was good. Okay. Wow. There's a lot went on right there. Right there in those ten verses, you're talking about billions of years of stuff that went on that uh, was pretty incredible. And we have so few words to describe what actually went on. So, um, how do we all think that it started? You know, when I was uh, growing up, that we used to, uh, we didn't really have a word for it. We just said the beginning of creation, I guess, so to speak. Uh, there was a, a professor, I could have had this wrong, I believe it was at Tulane University, but uh, he was writing a, a, a paper on the creation, the beginning of, uh, of the universe, and he termed the word Big Bang in his uh, thesis, and it was adopted from that point on. His paper was a big success. People adopted what his thought processes were of how it all started. And so that's how we got the name Big Bang. But what does that mean to y'all? Does anybody have any comments about um, how you thought that it all started? When I was growing up, um, I don't think I thought a lot about it. I think Kobe even made some point to that. Uh, just didn't really think about it that much. So I said it started, so I'm going, oh, okay, it started. Um, what, what I find is that there's ten words to describe that. I mean, the first ten words, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There it is. <laughs> exactly. That's it. It's only ten words, God created the universe. Right, and there's a lot that happened. There right. In those so when you look at it from that perspective, you kind of go, wow. But yet, like you said, this was written for a few people at that time who needed that. Yes. And that's all they needed. That's all they needed. That's all that they understood. They and if you're God. a shepherd boy, you understood that there was a beginning. They would never have understood the minutiae or the, the, the tininess of an atom or whatever else no. you want to get into. Or no. matter for that matter. Expansion. So, 
And I think I never really thought about it too much, but I think if I thought, if I heard the word Big Bang, I would have thought, oh, that's what uh, evolutionists think. Right. But, I mean, that was when I was younger. But, um, yeah, I would have thought Big Bang, oh, don't say that. Well, I can remember, I can remember say growing that. up yeah. at some point in maybe high school or junior high or something. I don't know if it was a preacher or Sunday school class or or what, but somebody saying, you, you don't say the Big Bang. That's not in the Bible. You don't, mm -hmm. uh, you don't express that term, Big Bang. But actually, it, it scientifically, it really explains kind of what happened. The only thing that we don't know, and again, like I said before, is we don't know where all the matter and stuff came from in the very beginning, and we'll never know, I don't. There's no that, way we could ever know, I don't think. Wasn't that an issue, because I remember the Bible says that God created the heavens and the earth. Right. And that means out of nothing. I created it. Right. And what was before Bang nothing says, is really what hangs everybody up. So, but the Big Bang <laughs> says they started with something and God made it out of something. Made else. something out of so something. So the Big Bang is evil because God started it out of nothingness. It was a big issue that I remember. And therefore, you didn't say Big Bang. So, yeah, it was evil. <laughs> it was evil right. to even think that God took a <coughs> rock and broke it and made small rocks out of it. Right. God just made rocks. Well, everything that we, we know of in the very beginning, there's nothing that can be proven, and it's all just theory, of course. And again, it makes no difference whether we go to heaven or hell in the way we believe in, in that of how it started. But just out of curiosity, you know, we try to put things together and, and, and try to figure out how exactly it all started. The only thing that we do know from sure is that everything started from a center point in the universe. And we did not know that until about 10 or 15 years ago. With all the new technology that we have, all the computer systems that we have, all the satellites and rockets and the telescopes and stuff that we've deployed out into outer space to look out into the universe, we did not really realize what was going on uh, in the expansion of our universe. And it's been proven two things, that everything in the universe is expanding. It's going away at a rapid speed. And it is apparently, the longer time goes, the faster it moves away. Now, how do they know that? Well, they've, they've figured out the trajectory. We have something like 200 billion galaxies in the whole universe that we can count, more or less. And what they did is they um, trained their telescopes and, and other things to um, certain objects in the universe. And they've tracked that over a period of time, say 10 or 15 years, and they noticed that there's movement in every galaxy from this point to this point. Well, when they track that trajectory of that galaxy, that one, and that one, and that one, and that one, that when you pinpoint and map the trajectory of all those, they all come back to a center point. They all point to the exact same spot in the universe. They all come back to a beginning. They don't just move away here, and this move here, and this move here. They're all moving away at the same speed and all point to the exact center spot in the middle of the universe. So it gives credence. Which is Brian. <laughs> it gives credence to the, the thought of a big bang where everything was contained somehow, some way, we'll never know, but was released in all directions and it's all going the same speed and it all started from the same spot. So that gives us a, a point of, of beginning. Well, that's way more technical than any shepherd boy needs to know. But. Well, and God, out of nothingness, could have put that thing there that was going to blow into all those things. Mm -hmm. Well, he created all the things that blew apart, blew up, and all the gas and the chemicals and all, of, all that. He set the stage for all that. Things being created were produced by original materials and then were being altered by natural processes that he put into place so that man could find and use them. So, the earth and the atmosphere were created in the 
in the preparation for life in verses 1 through 10, and that's why we stopped at 10. 1 through 10 describes the creation of the universe, the heavens, the earth, and what went on to prepare for life eventually on earth. The first verse of Genesis is a creation verse. It's not a making verse. And again, if you go back and look at the original Hebrew, and guys, I'm with you. Preachers used to spit out Hebrew words all the time in their sermons and stuff, and I'm like, oh, brother, I don't care about the Hebrew words. But really, when you get into it and you're trying to figure out what were they trying to, what was trying to be said and the way we interpret it, and you're going to see there's some misinterpretation here through uh, some of what we read. Um, but the verse is a creation verse, and they use the word bara, B-A-R-A, bara. It's a creation word by God. So God created things out of nothing and made something. Later, everything after verse 10, he didn't really create it, but he made things from the things that he had created. You see the difference? He created, created this and then later made things from what he created. And we'll go over that. Um, the making verse is the word Asa or Asa. And uh, that's the two things that, that how things were brought into existence by an act of God. Objects were created in the heavens in verse 1 and... Um, all these celestial bodies were all made, and you just you know start spitting out words. You can just think of all kinds of things up in the universe. They were all created then, but uh, when you read this, you have to realize that light didn't reach Earth until verse three. So all this stuff was made out here, and it was exploding, and it was coming together, and spinning, and and uh, forming, and all that stuff. And I'm sure that there was light maybe he maybe they were being created but didn't have light but light did not come to earth until verse three but that was the third 24 hour period no <laughs> no we're still evening we're night. still we're still in day one so there was no night or day yet uh the way we think that the earth was just covered uh, of course it was just a big old molten ball at this point in, in time and it was covered in a dense hazy fog, mostly comprised of carbon dioxide um, that we couldn't breathe, uh, nothing could live here. It was still in the formation of, of becoming a, a planet. Um, when hot did finally arrive here at Earth, according to verse three, it was a continual light. It burned the fog off and the haze and everything, but it was a continual light. How did that happen? I don't know, I can't explain that. Good. Yeah, that's kind of think if there was light and the earth is round that there's got to be, how does everything have a continual light? It's hard to explain, but that's the way it is because flat. we don't talk about it was flat. flat. The earth was flat <laughs> at that time and so there was continual light everywhere. And there was Perfect. only one dimension. They didn't have a second dimension so the one on the back side, it was all flat. <laughs> right? Maybe that's where Blow the whole theory right came there. about. Right. That's where the whole flat earth came, theory yeah. came about. Yeah. Yeah. What is really interesting, you say, well, what, what's the importance of that, and how do we know that, that that's even true? Well, when uh, light came to earth, and not till verse 14 did we actually distinguish between night and day. We actually did not have night and day until verse 14. And at that point, I believe, is when the earth started rotating, and we actually started having night and day. But up until that point, we pretty much had continual sunlight. And how do we know that? Well, if you go back into the fossil records and you look at the first beginning plants and trees, there's no growth rings. You know, growth rings have, you have to have a morning and a day and seasons and years to have growth rings. There's no growth rings. It's continual. And we've looked at thousands and thousands of them, and it's pretty much been proven that there's no growth rings back in ancient trees and plants. So we know that there was truly probably continual light just like we believe that there is um, so then we move into verses four through eight in four through eight 
we're starting to talk about the atmosphere. So what did he do? What did he do to the atmosphere? What does it talk about? Separating the, <coughs> the firmament, the waters in the firmament. What is the firmament? It's a funny word to me. Firmament. 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 That's the, is, is the heaven. All heavens. Everything above the earth is the firmament. It's hard to picture, but water was everywhere. He created water, but it was all it was separated out. So when you get into verses four through eight, it talks about the separation of water, uh, and what he has done at this point is that he has separated it into three categories. We have water in the earth, which is the aquifers, which we all know of. This is part of his preparation for man on coming to earth. We have water in the aquifers at this point. He has created uh, water on the earth, which we see as seas, oceans, and rivers. And then we have uh, water in the atmosphere as clouds, rain, fog, etc. That's how he divided the water up in four through eight. It was in the earth, on the earth, and above the earth. Any questions, comments? Nope. I don't, I don't know if it's true, no, but I just remember hearing that it never rained until the ark. It didn't. Well, not until so, the ark. No, that's not true. I mean, I don't, I don't know if that's true. I, I just remember hearing that at some point in time. That they no, and we'll, and we'll get in was. that, but it does not rain until we get uh, way, way into making of, of the earth, until we, the land has already started to appear. And at that point is when it started to rain for the first time because that's when we started getting plants. On the land that was that was given, which they couldn't have done otherwise. But you're very close. Yes. So, so, and this is, so one of the fascinations that, that I've always had was why a globe? Why, why not a square? Why not an octagon? Well, part of that simply is that uh, if you had a square or an octagon or something like that, I thought about that. We had discussions. Uh, is it you have to have the spin, the rotation? You have to have the rotation of Earth. If you're rotating something for four billion years, things are going to sling off just by centrifugal force, and you're going to create a sphere because of that. You also have to have the sort of uh, spinning to create night and day, and, and to create gravity. And I get all that. Yeah, I, guess I, what, I guess what my point is, how perfect is that? Isn't that wonderful? And so if you're exactly. looking at it and going, okay. And how well yeah. thought out ahead of time. Right. Because to me, when you look at belief or not belief or creation, or not, to me, that was one of the, to me anyway, that's one of the most astounding things is, okay, everything that is going to be able to survive in our universe is going to have to be a globe. It's going to have to be spiritual and you're going to have rocks floating around. There's no life on that rock, probably, right? But there is life on anything that is a globe. And so it's always fascinating me that God created this in such a way that yeah, that's the so way it's going to survive, right? Otherwise, it's not. It, it amazes me when you think of just things like, like that. Well, and then you go and you go, okay, and then you look at atoms. If you look at an atom, I mean, if you look at oh, oh. the nucleus and all the electrons going around, it's basically... Your universe is basically the sun exactly. and the planets. And so all of these designs that he created have gone from the largest down to the very smallest. Very tiniest, tiniest. And like, think of those things. I know, and to me. I mean, if you were going to design that, would you, would you have done that? No, probably not. <laughs> and it's the beauty of him thinking about every single little tiny detail, tiny detail like yeah. that that is so beautiful about our creation. And it's just, and, 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 and something like that makes all the difference in the world between life and death. Just something because it was spiritual, like you're talking about. The last thing I'll shut up, when we went to Washington. No, don't be shut up. When we went to Washington, we went to several museums. One of the museums we went to, it showed uh, basically the, the geographical design of, this, of the rotation of these, uh, I'll say rotation, it was the trajectory of these uh, uh, comets mm -hmm. throughout the universe. It literally is a piece of artwork. I don't know if you remember the little game you used to have with your kids.
is put some pen, put the yeah, what was that called? Spirograph. Spirograph, right. Spirograph. right. When you do yeah. this, <laughs> exactly what it was. And I was like, I'm like, seriously, this just happened? This didn't just happen. Somebody put this together, right? Because when you look at it, it literally is a piece of artwork. The trajectory of all of these um, um, heavenly bodies that we have, that we can look at. Comets and meteorites. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 it all has a pattern. It does all have a pattern. There is a pattern. <laughs> God has a pattern. God has a plan. There's a purpose. It's amazing. And, and that's what excites me so much is to be able to, to see God's plan from what little he's explained in the Bible to what we know technology and scientifically today to put that together and like what he's just talking about. So we move on in verses 10, 6 through 10. We talk about verses 4 through 8. Verses 4 through 8. Uh, talking about the separation of the atmosphere and the water. Now we go into verses 6 through 10, and it's telling us how the physical earth was modified. Uh, it's not really any creation here, but only modification at this point. Uh, because before life could exist on earth, you know, there had to be an environment created to support that life. And so that's what we're doing here as we start beginning in verses uh, 6 through 10. So, if you read um, verses <coughs> 1 through 5, <coughs> it talks about the heaven and the earth and the separations of water and stuff. And this is the end of the first day. So, we're going to get into... What time do I got to stop? Is it time? <coughs> well, yeah, bro. All right. I really hate to start this with... Uh, so, let's, let's just stop right there. I want to go back to Shannon's spirograph. Yeah. Have you ever tried to draw that without a spirograph? <laughs> I mean, you can't it's, do that. I, even with the spirograph, I could never make it finish before I messed it up somewhere. Well, I can see that being the way you are. <laughs> yeah. If you think about how precise, like you said, the little bitty details. The tiniest of details. Well, and God obviously loves spheres because DNA is spherical. Uh-huh. Um, Everything. Well, like a closed loop, like in your body. You right, know, right. The electricity within, the blood <coughs> flow, it's all, you know. It all circular. goes round and round. Mm -hmm. Well, next week, uh, uh, y'all please uh, read through the creation again if you get time and, and prepare any questions that you may have. But next week, what we're going to get into, and I don't want to start this today because there's a lot to talk about there, is... Uh, when you read verses 5, let me just read 5 again real quick. Uh, God called the light day and the darkness he called night, and the evening and morning were the first day. So we get into this whole thing of what was a day. <coughs> what was morning and night? And we really think that was a 24-hour period, and so we're going to discuss that, and we're going to discuss um, the word that they used here was yom, Y-O-M, yom. And it appears over 2,000 times in the Bible. And it means a whole lot of stuff, not necessarily a 24-hour day. So we're going to talk about that next week. This is where we're going to pick up. Is we're going to uh, start there and talk about what actually was a day and, uh, and, God's, and, and what God kind of laid out there for us as, as far as that goes. Any more questions before we dismiss? Thank you all for being here. And uh, that's where we'll pick up next week with uh, uh, the timeline.